Transformations. In order to show growth in a story, the two main routes writers take are internal or external. With the internal route, you have your character change in an emotional slash mental way, put their belief systems and ideologies to the test and place them in a situation to express that change. One of my favorite examples of this type of character growth is in Matt Reeves' The Batman. From the introduction, we see how Bruce uses the Batman persona to instill fear into his enemies. But this has the negative side effect of instilling fear into the same people he is trying to protect and inspiring others to use that same method to terrorize the city. But by the end of the film, our hero realizes the error of his approach and decides to become a literal beacon of hope. We see that fear turn to trust. While it is vocalized by Bruce through the narration, I think it's still effective. With the external growth, the variety of options are almost endless. Maybe you do a time skip, showing how the passage of time has changed the character and their way of life. Maybe they go from rags to riches, or vice versa. Maybe it's an upgraded suit, or a new haircut. They master a technique they couldn't before, or are able to obtain an item they couldn't have until they were ready. Expressing character growth, or in other words, a transformation, in some way is a pivotal aspect of good storytelling. When there is a transformation in one's belief, or attitude, or a change in their entire perspective. Even we as people in real life, as we learn, we transform. Maybe our transformations aren't as grandiose as they are in some of our favorite media. There is some parallels that you can draw from some of your favorite stories. I don't know how much you consider this when consuming media, but it could be fun when you start noticing it. Actually, do you have any favorite character growth moments you can think of? Um, I, I I'm not sure how this relates to your treatment, but I'm sure if I gave it some thought, something may come to mind. Uh, thank you for sharing your interest in storytelling with me, Jonathan. Maybe next time I can ask you who your favorite villains are. Anyway, outside of that, we covered a lot of ground today, sans the screenwriter talk. Before we end our session, I suppose the last question I have for you is, what would you like to gain from therapy? Is there something specific that you want to work on when it comes to your mental well-being? Hello, friend. Yeah, I'm talking to you this time. Bet you thought that first part was for you. I gotta say, I feel like I'm gonna get decent mileage out of this whole therapy thing. I feel like I might be able to be myself around her, or whatever that means. And no, I don't think I'll tell her about you anytime soon. Doesn't really seem like a good idea, considering you're not real. Enough about that. When I was talking about character growth a moment ago, I forgot to tell her about my favorite kind of external growth in stories, specifically in anime and manga, the unlocking of new forms. When a character changes their appearance completely and unlocks a look and power to fight against their enemies. I'm obviously referring to the actual real meaning behind this term. transformations. Design, ability, and purpose. When I think about my favorite transformations, all three of these elements are prevalent. The key is having balance between them. Though some put more stocks into different areas, it works out into one of those triangle graph thingies. What are they called? Uh, pentagrams? Let's see if we can capture the anatomy of transformations by going through all three of these elements and chatting about our favorite forms while we're at it. It'll be fun. Well, fun for me. I'm not really sure how you feel about it. Understanding character design can get kind of messy. As someone who used to draw a lot in high school and in my early years of college, I don't fully understand what goes into making good character design. Getting the base design down of your character is a real chore, and that must go double for designing their transformations. So what are my favorite kinds of designs? Well, that's simple. No, literally, like simple designs. The transformation should elevate the base design, not completely overtake it or go way far off course for me at least. For example, the godfather of transformations, the iconic, the legendary 
Super Saiyan. Spike up the hair, dye it blonde, and change the eye color. Boom, you got yourself a killer transformation. So much so, you can see this very design philosophy in other transformations. Yeah, but that's kind of an old example. Ternary plot. That's the word I was looking for earlier. It's not pentagram. Let's try something a bit more current. Gear 5. The modern Super Saiyan is a peak simplistic design, taking Monkey D. Luffy's amazing, fun base design and elevating it to god status. And all that's required is a white color palette and fluffy hair. While I am an enjoyer of his previous gear forms, I may be one of the last defenders of Bounce Man, Gear 5 is truly something special. It's still Luffy, the character we all know and love, but with small changes that make him feel like an otherworldly being. His mannerisms and new powers are definitely part of his transformation, but it's so simple and striking that I loved it from the moment I saw it. And speaking of new powers... For a transformation to be worth anything, it's gotta be more than just for the look. A transformation is meant for a character to transcend their current self and overcome what is in front of them. Give them the power, strength, and ability to achieve a goal. And that very ability better be cool as hell. Now you have your basic strength boost transformations like Max Potential Gone, Dragon Force Natsu, and of course, Super Saiyan. But personally, I think the best thing to give a new form is either a specific attack that can only be attempted during the transformation or a specific fighting style that can only be done in said form. For the former, you can go with something that's like an enhanced version of an already existing attack, just like how Naruto's Rasengan changes and gets more powerful with each new form. With the latter, you can have transformations that are designed to take base characters who don't fight at all and give them the power to enter combat. I like to call them the Power Ranger transformations. Think like Sailor Moon, Attack on Titan, Kill la Kill, Saint Seiya, Ben 10, but Doka Magica, Tokyo Mew Mew. You know, I, I just realized I literally am just describing magical girl transformations. Whatever. The point is to give the character a form that takes them from zero to hero, or in my favorite case of this type of transformation, from zero to devil. <laughs> Denji's Chainsaw Man form is so cool to me. It exudes such chaotic energy. Denji himself is a relatively normal looking kid, the only outstanding feature being his razor sharp teeth. But the moment he pulls the cord, he becomes unstoppable. His head in the form of a literal chainsaw and chainsaw blades sprouting from his hands, he is given the power to shred through anything. His attacks are so wild, free flowing, sloppy, yet immensely destructive. He can sprout blades from any part of his body and even use the chains as a tool in his arsenal. Becoming Chainsaw Man is to become a weapon of carnage. The moment I hear the roar of the engine, I know I'm about to witness greatness. The ability that a transformation grants should be as striking and as integral to the form as the design itself. If you can achieve a great design and great ability for your transformation, I gotta say, you've done a pretty good job in my book. But if you wanna take it to the next level, well, baby, you need the final piece. I'm sorry I called you that. I got a little carried away. I won't do it again, I promise. The final element to a great transformation, the part that I think is the most important, is the reason for the transformation to exist in the first place. In great stories, all the moving pieces have a reason for being there. There's deeper meaning to pull from, and I think a transformation should be no different. The purpose behind a transformation is what really elevates it to new heights just above it looking cool. It becomes a story element in itself, and in turn allows the reader to have greater appreciation for the form. I mentioned Gear 5 as an example of great design, but it also works in this department too. Gear 5 means a lot to the greater One Piece canon, and its purpose to Luffy is to be a reflection of his free-spirited nature. The form is who Luffy is at his core. Gon's transformation, while terrifying, is literally a depiction of Gon at his maximum potential. What it would look like if he had reached the peaks of his power in the situation in which he taps into it has a major significance as well. It's all about context, I guess. The why behind the transformation is 
was very important to me. But I think the perfect example of a character whose transformation has purpose, the one whose forms are a reflection of his internal struggle from overcoming the monster to accepting the truth of his origin, is the boy whose name means strawberry. Ichigo Kurosaki is a widely beloved character for not just his cool design, his cool attitude, his cool techniques, but also for his internal struggle as a character. Ichigo who just wants to live a life helping people and protecting his friends. Someone who will do the right thing no matter what it costs him. He isn't interested in being someone great. He uses his power to stand up to those who threaten the lives of the people he cares about and protecting the weak. Along his journey, Ichigo has had to contend with the conflict of his inner desires, the combination of different bloodlines, the fear of his own weaknesses, the forces that transcend human comprehension. At every juncture, Ichigo has not only had to face insurmountable challenges, but also himself. And every single one of his transformations are a reflection of those struggles and epiphanies. To be honest, I've never been a huge fan of Ichigo's forms from a design perspective. They don't speak to me like others do. They feel a little too messy. I prefer his more sleek looks like Hollow Mask, Bonkai Ichigo, but I can't deny what his forms offer in terms of purpose and meaning. They have weight to them, from the dark monster sleeping within him in the form of his perfect holification, to how his hollow mask evolves as he gets stronger, to the way his fullbringer form at the beginning looks more like his soul reaper outfit. Ichigo wears his heart on his sleeves, literally, and that is something to be commended from a writing perspective. Okay, well, that's all the elements in a nutshell. That sure was fun, wasn't it? There's a lot you can learn just by looking at design choices for transformations. Say what you will about anime, and manga or shonen in general, but a lot of time and effort is put into making these series what they are. Some may see transformations as just a tool for cool factor, but if you look beneath the outer layer, you'll see where their true beauty lies, or at least that's what I think. Plus it's fun talking about all the different transformations that I like. I mean, none of them were my favorite, but eh, no biggie. Hmm? What's with that look? Ah, uh, you want to know what my favorite transformation is? Well, I've given this one some thought, and I think the answer for me is as clear as day. Vegeta, what does the scouter say about his power level? It's over 9,000! There is a common narrative in the anime community that I really don't like surrounding Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball is, as I'm sure you're aware, a widely beloved and popular series. It's everywhere. You can't escape it. It's worked its way into the social consciousness, from memes to movie references to merchandise to Thanksgiving parades. It's kind of hard to believe that this series was once just a simple story about a young boy going on an adventure to find a couple of mystic balls. For me, I feel like Dragon Dragon Ball has always been there. I remember being a young, impressionable six-year-old kid, sitting in front of my CRT on a Friday afternoon, waiting to see if Goku would beat Frieza in time. Now being at the big age of 26, arguing with my friends on Discord if Satoru Gojo could beat Goku. The passage of time is pretty funny when you think about it. I really like Dragon Ball. Sure, there are plenty other series that I love more, but it will always hold a special place in my heart. But there's a problem with the series reaching the heights of popularity that Dragon Ball has. For a series being as endless as it feels, the beauty of what made the series as good as it was starts to get lost. With every new game, spin-off, movie, history starts to become a bit revisionist. People start to say things like, Dragon Ball was never that great. The fights were the only good part. The storytelling in Dragon Ball was always weak. Akira Toriyama created a story that was capable of standing the test of time. A tale that almost could live forever and has continued through series like GT and Super. It has cultivated a generation of people who have never seen what the series used to be. It has also caused the generation that was there from the start to forget what made the series so special. I have to admit, it happened to me too. I started to forget. But in 2023, I decided to revisit the series. My read-through of Dragon Ball from start to finish was an absolute blast. I forgot how funny, adventurous, intense, and creative the series could be. There are certainly a number of moments I could pick from to illustrate why Dragon Ball is so great. For as much as I was in 
enjoying reading through DB all the way to Z, there is one moment where it truly made sense to me. A moment that embodies the essence of Dragon Ball to me. That moment also happens to introduce my favorite transformation. And I won't watch this anymore! Gohan's transformation into Super Saiyan 2 is my favorite transformation of all time. To me, it is perfect for so many reasons. Not only does it look incredibly striking, taking the basic elements of Super Saiyan and turning them up to a hundred. Not only does it unlock incredible strength for Gohan to the levels we have not seen up to this point, as well as giving us some of Gohan's most iconic moves to date. But the main reason, the core of it all, is what it represents, its purpose. Gohan reaching Ascended Saiyan is the embodiment of all the character work Toriyama poured into him since the start of Z. Gohan's journey throughout Dragon Ball is truly something to behold. This is a boy who is introduced to us as a complete opposite of his father. Quiet, polite, gentle. He cried, he screamed, kidnapped, and stricken by fear. Gohan was framed in a way to not be taken seriously. Sure, he is the son of Goku, the warrior of Earth, but this kid seemingly had no interest in being like his father. But then we are given glimpses, moments of Gohan's destructive, explosive power, peeks into what lies beneath the surface. As he grows and matures, Gohan bears witness to what it means to be a fighter, a warrior. He follows in his father's footsteps to help his friends and grow stronger with every situation. It's really fascinating to read Z from this perspective. When you allow yourself to pay more attention to how the narrative pushes Gohan to the forefront with every passing encounter, it becomes more and more clear what Toriyama had planned for him. His training with Piccolo, him spiking the spirit bomb at Vegeta, saving Dende. Gohan is given moments to let his tenacity and strength of will shine through, shocking everyone at what he is capable of. Everyone except Goku. I guess it comes as no surprise, but it truly is heartwarming to see how much Goku believes in his son. He encouraged Gohan, praised him for his hard work, and would egg him on to go further. I like to imagine the moment Goku held Gohan in his arms for the first time, and think if he saw what Gohan would grow up and achieve. By the time we reach the start of the Cell games, Gohan has now achieved Super Saiyan. It's clear Gohan underwent rigorous training in the hyperbolic time chamber, but by this point, the spotlight for who will defeat Cell was still on Goku. Everyone, even the prideful Vegeta, is waiting with bated breath to see if Goku can defeat this foe like he's always done. But once Goku backs down and throws in the towel, the spotlight immediately shifts and beams directly on Sun Gohan. I always had an affinity for underdog characters, but Gohan was particularly cool to me. Despite his small stature, despite how scared he got, he would find the power to stand up and fight, even if it had to be forced out of him. Watching his character development gave me a sense of hope for myself. I often hear people say that they want to be like Goku or Vegeta or Trunks, but personally, I always wanted to be like Gohan, to work hard, push past my fears, help people, and find that hidden strength within me, and when the moment finally comes, to transform into a hero. Super Saiyan 2 Gohan is what makes Dragon Ball special. The storytelling in this series is far greater than what consumers today give it credit for. The character growth, subtext, and nuance of this series can easily be missed by those who aren't looking. Just because it's simple or about battles doesn't mean it isn't capable of being profound. After having to watch his friends and family brutally beaten by the Cell Juniors, Gohan is stricken with fear once again, doubting himself in the heat of battle, unsure if he can live up to the expectations his father placed on him. But with final parting words from Android 16, someone who shared Gohan's love for Earth and all living things, the seal is finally released. Transcendent power erupts from Gohan, and he dons his new form. The representation of everything this character has been through up to this point. The one character who could truly surpass his father and all Saiyans before him. Gohan has now become the only remaining protector of Earth. Thank you, Gohan. You inspire me. You give me hope that one day I'll achieve my very own transformation.